Welcome back to Dishing It. Okay, the potatoes are actually boiling. They're gonna get done. I'm shocked, Jeremy. Yeah, that smells so good, too. <laughs> does it? Yeah. I think it does, too. Okay, so now that these, uh, we basically got, I took this off the heat during the commercial because I didn't want them to get too done too soon, and I didn't want to burn the garlic. Yeah. Because that would be not good. So now that these are, I think they're looking pretty good, right? Yeah, for sure. I think sure. I'm gonna add the cabbage now to get that sauteing. I will tell you, uh, my ancestry, my heritage is German, and there's a lot of German dishes with cabbage. Yep. And Same. I just love cabbage. Yep. My grandma moved here when she was 19 from Germany. So. Really? Yep. Oh, Same wonderful. <laughs> what, do you know what part of Germany? Or? Um, Bad Kruxna, I think is how you pronounce it. Wow. It was a smaller town, yeah. Amazing. So, did, yep. did she like to cook, cook uh, traditional German dishes? She did when I was younger. She had a lot of sauerkraut, and I can't remember, it was like a bologna type meat that she would eat, and mm -hmm. then she always has these weird cheeses. I call them weird cheeses, she likes them. I think they're weird. <laughs> <laughs> is your grandmother still with us? Or she is, is oh, yeah. So she lives here in Springfield still, so yep. Okay, here's she what I want. Watching. So <laughs> it, uh, it wasn't, it's your grandmother. My great-grandparents moved here from Germany. Okay. Their last name was Longhofer. Very long, I can't even spell it for you. Yeah. But I remember my great-grandmother always making those German dishes. So I, I want to have your grandma on just to make me some German food. Yeah, we'll have her on. We'll I just want to have some German food. <laughs> Take me back. And my mom still makes one of our old family recipes. I don't know, I'd be curious to know if your grandmother knows this one. It is, uh, we call them beer rocks. Okay. And it's um, basically a dough shaped like a big uh, roll. And inside is stuffed, stuffed with uh, meat and cabbage and salt and pepper. It's like a spiced meats, cabbage, Interesting. and when you yeah. cut into it, you put butter on top of it, lots of butter mm. on top of it. Yeah, you're winning. Warm out of the oven, <laughs> and when you cut it, you're eating like a big giant roll filled with uh, ground meat and cabbage. Oh, yum, it's, that sounds so good, yeah. It is, so, and my mom still makes that. Well, my fiance is a big bread maker, so if she doesn't make it, okay. pass it oh, on to him. Oh, I'll pass it on, <laughs> so. I'll get the recipe. I've never even attempted to make the beer ox because you know when your mom makes it, everything your mom It'll makes never tastes be better. The same. Yeah. No, <laughs> of course not. But what I love too has been passed down for generations in our family, this recipe, that even now my nephews and nieces, mm -hmm. you know what they request now? Is the beer ox. Oh wow, that's awesome. And I love that, because I'm like, just thinking about, if you think about your great grandparents or your grand, anybody in your family who's moved to America, right? keeping those traditions alive to me, it's just, it gives me goosebumps. Yeah, I'm just like, it's very neat. To tell them like, guess what? Your great, great, great grandchildren are gonna love this recipe mm -hmm. and it's gonna yeah. be passed down. That just, to me that's so special. Yeah. I love that. And what is your grandma's name? Um, Erica. Erica, is that a German name? Um, I don't believe so, but it is with a K, so it might be. There you, okay, as yeah. long as it's with a K. I'm pretty sure that is her birth name is Erica. So. That's wonderful. Yes, so. No, that's a beautiful name. I just, I was trying to think, you know what, that's so bad. <laughs> I'm trying to think of like my great grandparents' names and sometimes they escape me. I had a great grandma, um, Sylvia, which is a great mm -hmm. old name. Eleanor, a uh, great old name. Yep. Now my great grandma Longhoffer, I'm going blank on her name. Isn't that terrible? Yeah. Like put me on the spot. I can't even think of her. It makes you feel better. I do not know my grandma's maiden name, so oh. I can't tell you her last name. So we'll just we'll stick with that. We'll stick See, with that. We're, we're even now. Yeah. I don't feel as bad. I don't feel as bad. So. Oh gosh, that looks so good. Okay, I'm gonna let that cook down just a little bit more. And now what I'm gonna do is with my butter fork, I'm gonna see how the potatoes are doing. Now, are they done yet? No. But, am I impressed the water's boiling? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I am. Look at that, look at that. That's a rapid boil. Okay, there we go. Just kind of, kind of there we go. I don't know about you, but uh, last night when I was peeling the potatoes, I don't know why I find peeling potatoes relaxing. I was so relaxed. I was in my <laughs> kitchen sink, peeling potatoes going, why do I feel so zen right now? Yeah. I just felt really, I don't know, just at peace. I was like. Maybe this is my new, like, de-stressing. Yeah, new career opportunity for you. But I tell you, I never <laughs> eat potatoes because they're full of carbs. Yeah. So I always get, when I'm at Price Cutter, I always get the, um, the prepackaged frozen mashed cauliflower. Yeah. And then I'll add heavy cream to it to thicken it up, and, mm -hmm. and it's low carb, but there's nothing more comforting. I've heard of people mixing the two so that you can kind of cut it in half, but still get like all of it. So there's a little tip for you. you Why are you tempting home. me right now? I know, I and I actually, to, to tell you that I got that tip from, um, my friend that bothers me about eating all the butter. So. <laughs> They're like, stop eating the butter, yeah. cut your carbs. Yeah. <laughs> Make everything half Make cauliflower. Everything <laughs> half cauliflower. I will tell you though, I've eaten a couple places recently that their cauliflower pizza crust mm, yeah. is so good, you would never it. know. Yeah. Alamo Draft House, amazing. amazing. The Thai chicken pizza on the cauliflower crust, mm -hmm. amazing. 
And then if you're down at the Galloway station in the Galloway Grill yeah. area, uh, it's uh, The Rock. I don't know if you've oh, been yes, there. Oh, yes, I have been there. The Rock has amazing cauliflower crust pizza. They also have cauliflower wings there too, and they are so good. I don't know if I've had those. Yeah, so they're like chicken wings, but cauliflower. That yeah. sounds amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, oh my gosh. Okay, so this weekend I gotta go to The Rock, and yeah. I gotta go to Jumbo's Pass. <laughs> yeah. I think while I'm cooking and we're smelling the food, it's making me very yeah, hungry. Yeah, for sure. So. so now we're talking. Well, I'm curious to tell, um, you've been in the Ozarks your whole life. Mm -hmm. What are your favorite like restaurants around town? Yeah, so my number one favorite restaurant has got to be Bambino's. Uh, I love Italian food. It's just, it's nice, classic. I love the cafe atmosphere that you get, especially the one on the south side. Um, it, oh, I was going to ask you, south side or downtown? Yeah, I go to both of them. Mm -hmm. um, just kind of depends on where I am, but I just love, I love both of the atmospheres. The old home atmosphere is really cool, just the reuse of that. But you that. know what it's full of? Carbs. Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> full of great taste as well. Great so. taste. <laughs> okay, so Bambino's, any other restaurants you can think of that, you um, that float your boat? Bambino's, um, I'm always down for hibachi. Oh, yeah. So. I would say my favorite hibachi, um, it's now known as Kim Dynasty. It's out on East Sunshine. East um, Sunshine. Yeah, it used to be Kazoku Sushi, sushi okay. and Grill, but it's changed, so, but yeah. Nice. So it's delicious, one of my favorites. I, I, and here's the thing, I, I try to support local businesses as much as I can, especially local yeah, restaurants. Absolutely. There are so many now, I couldn't even tell you my favorite because I, I go to them all the time and yeah. I love them. Yeah. I mean, there's all over town, you, if you're in a certain area of town, you can always find something good and local. Yeah, to you support. always have like Missouri Mike's and all the food trucks and everything. So oh, the food it's trucks. Yeah. The food trucks are so good. Yeah. Okay. Are blessed. <laughs> so, guys, I've turned the heat off. This is done. The only thing I'm slightly still concerned, I think we'll have time in the next segment. We're gonna mash the potatoes, because we have to, we're running out of time. Yep. But I'm gonna let them cook through the commercial just to be safe. And then we're gonna make it, it may be very hot. Are you okay with very hot food? That's okay. See, I'd rather have hot food than cold food. Yeah. <laughs> too hot versus too cold. These are almost done, like my fork is somewhat breaking them. But you know, I've made mashed potatoes enough in my life to know what it's supposed to feel like. Right. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so we're gonna let this cook a little bit longer through the commercial, but when we get back, we're gonna drain it, combine everything, and then try these Irish mashed potatoes, and I am so hungry right yeah, now. Can't wait. <laughs> it's gonna be amazing. Uh, so we'll keep cooking, but please don't go anywhere because if you're curious to see what cabbage uh, and green onions taste like in mashed potatoes, we're gonna tell you. Yeah, we will. It's gonna be good. All right, guys, don't go anywhere. So much more fun on this Irish version of Dishing It right after this, my friends. Okay, we'll be back. I think they're almost done. 